Well, Mark called from the repair shop the other day. He said, uh, got bad news for you, Joe. I said, all right, anything about Phil Felicia over here has been bad news. Just spill it to me, Mark. He says, well, the drive motor that you had worked on that made it 25 feet, he says, it blew up. I says, yeah, that's what I figured. He says, got in there. He says, uh, one of the little plungers in the bottom and a uh, flat face seal area had been welded up. I'm like, okay, yeah, they told me there's some welding down in that sucker. And uh, he says, yeah, where they welded, you don't weld. He says, and whoever they had working on this machine shop uh, didn't do their job right either. He says, and by the way, he says, when I got in there, one of the uh, seals was installed backwards. So, strike 10 for DC hydraulics. Anyways, I said, well, put it back together. Just as long as it'll crawl on a trailer, I'll get it back up here and I'll deal with it when I can save up some money. He said, all right. He called me back a little later on. He says, uh, you don't want to hear this. I says, yeah, but, oh well, go ahead. He says, it made it 25 feet. I says, okay, that motor? He says, no, the other one. So the motor that I haven't had a whole lot of trouble out of whatsoever. He says, yeah, it made it 25 feet out of there. And uh, he said, I've never really seen one blow like this. He says, it blew the entire back housing off. I said, yeah, I did that to the other side too. He said, no, I mean, it blew the entire back housing out of it. As in that brake box area blew completely out. I said, yeah, okay. Well, be Monday before I can get down there. So yesterday I ran down. We winched this thing onto the trailer. I stopped by the house where I'm living, picked up all the other implements, grapple, forks, everything else. Really helps to have friends with equipment bigger than yours. Loaded it all up and brought it over here to the property. <clears throat> so, gonna winch this puppy off. I guess right now is a pretty good time to introduce you to Casey. Casey is my other acquisition. At least Casey's what my kids call it anyways. This is a about a 2003 model Case CX-75. So the CX-75 and the CX-80 were about the same model except the 75 went straight up and down with the boom and the 80 had the pivot on the boom. This one like you see has got steel tracks. This is a 16,000 pound machine. Phil over here weighs about 9. This is called a MIDI. This is not a mini excavator, this is a MIDI. Uh, being built by Case, New Holland was the same thing, so an NH-75 is the same machine. They were built by Sumitomo out of Tokyo, Japan. They were what they referred to as a gray market machine, but you can find parts for them. Why did I buy this one? I ended up with a lot of some back pay, and I said, one thing I need is a working machine, so we took a portion of it and bought this. It was local. It's got some issues, but it was local, and I didn't have to haul it in from two states away or anything like that. So market on that machine there is anywhere from 20 to 25. So we'll get uh, Felicia backed in over here in a second and drag it off the trailer. Softo. Uh, so this is the drive motor on the left side that has been giving me all the problems and the fits so like we said it made it about 25 yards and then internally it just started leaking so chances are it's one of these outputs i don't know we're going to pull it off sometime and go over it uh, a place in texas called texas final drive basically says that you know if i put both of them on a pallet ship them down there he'll uh, give me core credit on them but this guy over here is going to be the trick because this is the one that the whole back housing is blown out on See if I can get underneath here and show you what we're up against here. I hope you can see that, but yeah, that's the back of the brake housing that's blowed out. Uh, if you remember in my last video, the other one did that same thing, but I had at least 14 bolts out of the 28 holding it on. This one looks a little worse. So it turns out when the last time I checked my case drain filter, I found a little piece of red, which kind of looks like a uh, red RTV sealant, which 
you don't use red rtv sealing on these hydraulic systems nor anything in there i talked to a hydraulic shop and he says yeah if you found something red in there he says what your hydraulic company's doing is using an antiquated outdated polyurethane seal and nobody uses that seal anymore because it was known to cause problems i says oh i think the fbi calls that a clue all right let's have some fun me and my drive motors are smoked i am not going to try to pump up the brake on the one side i'm afraid i'm just going to latch onto it and drag it off because honestly i feel like being destructive today i may knock the uh, drive sprocket off here in a few minutes just to let it free wheel a little bit more but we'll see So we're gonna find out. Here we go, boys and girls. Slag as a whistle. Casey. Um, yeah, I would say that 10,000 pound drag capacity is pretty good. We got Phil, Philistine up on a block over here. Everybody's probably going to ask, why didn't you just use the boom to gently drag it off? Well, here's the problem. When I said Casey's got some issues, one of the issues is up there. It looks like a small crack up there, but there's actually a crack in the boom. Right up there, what looks to be a scratch is actually a crack and it goes all the way across the top and this side of the boom so i didn't notice the crack when i bought the thing got it home got to ripping out some trees i got to ripping out all these trees through here and digging out these big stumps and these are stumps are pretty healthy sized stumps and crawled off and went to grease it and that's when i noticed the crack but it actually started really building up when I lifted the Detroit off of the trailer up there. That Detroit weighs about five grand, between four to five thousand with the carriage and everything that's built around it. And uh, yeah, it pretty much had me tipped almost all the way over on unloading that thing off a trailer. So for the old 450 to pick that thing up and walk it around the yard, that was pretty good. Being that these machines weigh the same, except for the leverage is much different with the old uh, 450. It was low to the ground. And this one's got the arm that reaches out. So my intention is, I picked up a uh, thumb the other day because I don't have a thumb on this machine. But uh, picked one up. It's actually for a gale or a geel. I don't know however you pronounce it. G-E-H-L. Uh, it's an edge. Edge thumb. But they were actually made by Work Bra. And Work Bra makes some pretty heavy duty attachments. And this particular one, as much as I don't really want to admit it, it's going to hook up here at the dipper stick and then close down around the bucket. I went ahead and did it because it's about a $4,500 boom or a $4,500 thumb 
for about 1500 bucks now there was no hydraulic cylinder with a weld on plates and all that stuff was there so i said all right i'll pull the trigger on this thing but what it's going to allow me to do is then later on get a quick coupler to go down here because i've got an auger that i need to retrofit over to this thing for digging stump holes and uh, with that thumb being hooked up hydraulically when the man sold me this thing the one thing that he requested to keep was this little box down here in the bottom because that is a hydraulic control box that goes out and starts messing with your solenoids out on your main valve body so you flip that to one it's in one feature flip it to the other and it's going to be throwing power to a different attachment that little guy right there is worth a lot of money if you're uh, switching in between attachments all the time so i'll do more on casey here later but just a quick rundown of course your travel pedals this right here is your auxiliary control so there's your auxiliary that's going to run out front right now can't really seem to get this puppy to move one direction or the other it wants to move in the rear but not the front so that's one of the diagnosis deals that i got to work on here overall clay enclosed cab heat and ac which neither of one work pretty good leak in the upper glass area up there she's been beat pretty good she's got about 6400 hours on her and uh, it's a turbo or not a turbo it's a naturally aspirated 55 horse zuzu engine in the back so there's your 55 horse zuzu engine over here on this edge underneath the muffler and all you're going to find hydraulic reservoir and all that which i'll do a full walk around on casey in another video but so far it's been a pretty decent machine and like i said i'm not a big fan of case machinery because they were kind of like international they got bought out and moved around by a bunch of people but uh like i said for what it was local i said okay we'll give her a shot uh and so far i've been well pleased with it especially with that steel undercarriage i really really like steel tracks i don't like rubber tracks much i've run one off on a john deere time or two and uh <clears throat> just don't like rubber much but the steel tracks on this that's uh that's a pretty healthy undercarriage and it's fairly new on this one so anyhow we'll close out today Take care and catch you on the next run.